the main muscle of a photographer is observation. And today I'm going to help you pump this muscle. Hello, this is Pavel Baturin, welcome back to my channel. I'm a landscape photographer and I watch YouTube to improve myself. There is nothing more useful than watching masters who achieve great heights in their skill. First of all, why should you watch YouTube photographers? Because you can read all the books on composition and not learn how to see shots where the masters see them. You can know everything about rule of thirds or golden ratio, but when you get to the location, this knowledge will remain a passive abstraction. Only practice helps us grow in our craft. And watching the best ones in this craft is a significant aid to our growth. So today I'm going to show you my selection of especially important in my point of view photographers on YouTube. But I watch all the time and I recommend you to do the same if you are not already subscribed to those beautiful creators. And no word about Peter McKinnon, I promise. And you will find all the links to the channels of these beautiful masters in description to this video down below. The first nomination is uh, landscape photography. How to find an interesting location, how to choose the right time, how to see a non-obvious composition, how to place the camera, where to look, what to do if things don't go according to a plan. My favorite author in this category, Gavin Hartcastle. Highly recommended. The person who makes every hike to every mountain an episode of sitcom. Not always a good sitcom actually, but still it's not boring to watch and sometimes it's just funny. Next one is a great and famous Thomas Hitton. If you're not subscribed to him yet, this is some kind of nonsense. Remedy this situation immediately. His videos are always contemplative and thoughtful. And he has extremely interesting composition choices. I do not understand why he grades his videos with this flat way. Probably it's for the extra contrast between his shots and the entire video. And perhaps this contrast makes his shots this expressive. Next, very interesting master is James Popsis. I find his approach to composition very unusual. He came up with the concept of human nature and shots human artifacts surrounded by nature and vice versa. And this is very interesting concept. Plus, it's interesting to see how his specific vision of color makes interesting pretty much any shot that both you and I would just walk past. Let's talk about forest photography. This gender has proven to be way more challenging to me than I was expecting. Usually forest is a jumble of elements, a huge amount of small details, distractions and usually it's just almost impossible to find any composition. Because forest usually is a visual house. I do not know how to deal with it and I'm not sure if I ever will. Of course, it's all depend on location, weather and patience. The rest of the photographers shoot forest and woodland also sometimes. But there is someone to learn from every single day and this is Adam Gibbs, whether it's because of his incredible experience shooting plants or because he's lucky to live near some of the most beautiful forests on the planet, Adam's videos usually a real treat for the eyes. He finds exceptional compositions where my eye only can find clutter and house. Watching his work is a real pleasure. Probably his videos could be hard to watch if you switch to him from some fast clips. But if you give yourself an effort to slow down to his rhythm, you will get an incredible boost to inspiration and want to immediately go to the nearest forest with your camera. Street photography. I didn't understand this genre before. I just didn't see the meaning and the beauty of it. Over the years, I've gotten an appreciation and interest to the genre. 
Aside from obvious difficulties in this genre, there are also psychological challenges. How do you shoot strangers? How do you stay focused on your idea and not get distracted? In this category I want to talk about Roman Fox. His vision of urban contrasts, shadow plays, very interesting to watch and it's really educational, at least for me. Also take a look on Pierre T. Lambert. Apart from absolutely infectious energy, in his videos Pierre also organizes some interesting challenges for street photographers, like shooting in a limited time, in a limited place and stuff like that. I highly recommend his channel as an endless source of positive energy. Let's talk about photography as an art. Aside from the technical skill itself, which certainly needs to be honed every single day, photography is a very creative activity. I mean, artistic activity. And there are a few people you should watch for just that, the development of your creativity. This is where I want to mention Sean Tucker. His videos are not so simple, but if you try to understand, what he is trying to convey in every episode, it can expand the horizons of photography perception. I believe Sean is a man of very deep understanding of the essence of photography. And I especially want to mention in this category my, my favorite YouTuber, Jamie Windsor. Besides deeply analyzing various aspects of photography as an art, his videos, each one of them, can be watched as a separate video masterpiece in itself. This is a great master who unfortunately neglects YouTube's algorithms and posts new videos quite, quite rarely. And I envy those who will discover him only now and will be able to watch Jamie's videos one by one in a row. All I have to do is just wait for the notification and pay attention. All the videos that are really interesting to watch, that create a mood, a desire to go shooting, that inspire you. Every such video has music and sound effects in the background. I use this crucial technique in my videos too. But music for YouTube must meet one important requirement. It must be copyright free. That's why I use the catalog of Envata Elements. You can find hundreds of thousands of music tracks and sound effects for your videos, as well as video footage, fonts, graphics, photos and all that stuff, with zero risks of copyright issues. And all on quite an expensive subscription. Highly recommended. If you sign up using the affiliate link in the description of this video, it will not affect your subscription in any way, but it will be a huge help for this channel. Thank you very much. Please write in the comments, who else of YouTube photographers do you watch? Who do you recommend to subscribe to? And don't forget to subscribe to my channel too. And give this video a like if you find it interesting. So thank you and check out this video. Ciao for now.